Hi everybody, Christy Glass here on the hottest day of the year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here to talk about knitting and please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Shantae. I'm online as Harlem Pearls. Everywhere. And I think that I met you, well I remember, you have the sweater, I remember the sweater you were wearing at Rhinebeck. I don't know if we met before then, do you remember? I don't think so. I think that no, was our that first not. time. Yes. And it was at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, what, 2018? 2019? 2018, I want to say. 2018. Yeah. And I remember, I, well, let's just show it. Oh, yeah. This, this sweater, one. you were wearing it, and then you said, and I spun all the yarn, and my jaw dropped. It's like, what? Yes, I did. Oh, my goodness. Is this an Andrea Mowry sweater? It is. This is the um, Nurture. Nurture. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's just Nurture by Andrea Mowry. So, anyway, I've always, I've, I think I, I don't know if I followed you, but I always remember you, Harlem Pearls. And mm -hmm. And I was going to be in town, and so I reached out and said, how about we talk about knitting? Yes. So here we are. Yay. Tell us your fiber story, because you're into all of it. I am. I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I started off as a crocheter. Mm -hmm. My aunt taught me when I was like 16 years old, but all she taught me to do was chain and then single crochet. So she chained I heard like this story so many times. 300 stitches, <laughs> and then told me, here, just go. And I was like, I'm not doing this. So I didn't do it. Like, I stopped. But when I got older and um, I was at work, I had a good work friend and we used to have lunch together. And then we couldn't have lunch because she said, oh, I have to go to my charity, you know, program. And I'm like, oh, what do you do? And at my job, they had a program where we would, they would make um, hand crochet knitted items for babies mm -hmm. and donate it to hospitals and to shelters. So I was like, I want to do that. So I learned how to crochet all over again. So I was very happy crocheting for a good um, year and I was like, oh, I'll never knit. Mm -hmm. I'll just be a crocheter, yeah. I'm never gonna knit. Mm -hmm. And then I learned how to knit out of spite. <laughs> what happened was my friend gave me- <laughs> Out of spite? Yes. So my friend gave me a book uh, for that Christmas as a gift mm -hmm. and um, it was full of knitting patterns and I'm like, but I don't knit. And she said, oh, but um, you can learn. And I'm like, no, I'm a crocheter. Why would you give me a knit book? Yeah. So, I was like, no problem. I'll write a note to the um, to the author and ask her because her email address was in the book. So I wrote a note and I said, hey, I love your book. Very nice. It has nice knitting patterns, but I don't knit. I crochet. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll ever come out with a crochet book? Yeah. And she wrote me back a very nice letter and said, um, no, buy my <laughs> first book. <laughs> and my first book, because I had bought her second book in her series, oh. and she said, buy my first book and that'll teach you how to knit and then you can knit the patterns. I see. So I said, forget that. <laughs> I went to like my local craft store mm -hmm. and I um, bought myself like like one of those learn how to knit kits. Mm -hmm. It has like a little ball of wool and of yarn and needles. Mm -hmm. And that weekend I sat down and I was like, I'm not leaving this room until I learn how to knit. And yeah. I taught myself how and to knit. And there you go. Yeah. I think it is sometimes hard to cross over between the two because I started as a knitter, just gave up on crochet several mm -hmm. times. And then I was the same way. I'm like, I'm learning this. And then I just felt so empowered yeah. that I could do it. Yes. yes. And so did you knit anything from the book, though? From the book from the friend? I think I might have yeah. knit one. Or, and then the, 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 the series, they ended up like a couple years later coming out with a crochet book. And I was like, really? Ah, I was <laughs> yes. <just> like, no. <laughs> so I gave them the idea. You're welcome. <laughs> so what is your fiber life now between the spinning, the crocheting, the knitting? Like, how much do you do of each, would you say? I'm mainly a knitter. Mm -hmm. I spin occasionally when it hits me, usually once a year during, during um, Tour de Fleece. Yes, I was going to say. I missed this year. I didn't do it. But usually Tour de Fleece, that's when I get my stash mm -hmm. and I spin everything up. That's my excuse. It almost looks like you have a sheep on your glasses. Do I? There's a no. gold icon. I'm making it's it a, a sheep. Yeah, yeah, it's a lion icon. Oh, okay. It looks fun. It looks funny. <laughs> I'm like I, she even has a sheep on her glasses. So, Tour de Fleece, tell us what that is in case people don't know what Tour de Fleece is. Sure. Tour de Fleece um, was started. I don't know who started it, but it was a while ago. But it coincides with the Tour de France. Mm -hmm. So, whenever they ride, we ride. Mm -hmm. We spin, which is you spin on your spinning wheel or your spindle or however you want to spin and then you can join the team. So a lot of um, people will join like their favorite designers team or whoever makes uh, yarn or makes fiber, you can join the team. And um, like on the same days on a tour when they have a difficult day, you do like a, spin a difficult spinning technique. Oh, you do? Yes. So like, yes. They, and have, like, they have a rest day, you rest. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And now do you have to be into cycling 
if you're doing tour de fleece? No. No. No, not at all. Because my <laughs> husband's really into it, and I, I'm like, that's fine. I'll knit while you watch it. No, I don't even watch it. I okay. just <laughs> know the days yeah. that we're supposed to spin, and yeah, I get a lot accomplished. Yeah, I bet. That's when I spun the yarn for this sweater, yes. was during a tour de fleece. Look at it. So I'm loving, I'm just obsessed with the green pops in this. I mean, oh, thank don't you. Don't you sometimes think like, okay, I've knit this whole sweater, but really it's about this. Yes. This green. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. So what happened with that, yeah, this sweater, us. it's a, um, a special spinning technique. So okay. what happened, it's called... Um, a combo spin mm -hmm. and what you do is you take like different fibers that might not necessarily not go together mm -hmm. and you mix them together and you make them go together now do you mix them within the bat or do you ply them you ply them <gasps> was that a good question yes i feel was. like that was that a really was good question <laughs> yes okay so you'll spin one whole fiber no so spin one whole other and then ply them so you start from the beginning so okay. say i have i had four different ounces because usually uh fiber will come like this like in a four ounce yes, ball yes yes so let me take this out this is kind of the same brand okay. so it'll come like this in a ball so okay. i have four different balls mm -hmm. that were kind of the same you know related like one had like green and blue one had like blue and purple one had like purple and pink so they're kind of in the same family so are we talking about color family or fiber family color color family okay color mm -hmm. color it's all different types mm -hmm. of wool mm -hmm. in here mm -hmm. so then like you would take like say I would take this and I would strip it up. Uh -huh. So I would like make strips. Mm -hmm. And then um, I would take another ball and make strips. Like oh strip it up goodness. so that they're random. And then as I'm spinning, I'm gonna take a random piece and add it and add, take a random piece so it's all random. I see. And then ply it together. Okay. So it's all mixed up. So you have all the random things, then mm -hmm. you're also applying it on top of that. Yes. <gasps> it's yes. so good. So now how many skeins is this? It was two skeins, okay. but it, it's not like about skeins. It's just how much that I spun. And I was like, I hope I have enough to make a sweater and yeah. it worked out. Yeah. So you just finished the spinning and then you knit the whole sweater. Yes. So this is a top down raglan. Yes. Yes, and that's why it worked, because if I had more, I would have knit more. So I like, did the first part, and then did the sleeves to make sure that I had enough to cover the sleeves, and then I knit the bottom mm -hmm. and until I ran out. Yeah, so you're like, we don't know if it's going to be cropped or not. <laughs> exactly. But we want full sleeves. <laughs> so the sleeves are, 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 what did my daughter say the other day? I said, cousins, not sisters. And she said, no, sisters, not twins. Yes. So these are sisters, not, not twins. twins. Yeah, so they're the same length, but all random stripes yeah. and stuff. What an accomplishment. I love this so much. Now tell us what happened to this sweater. You washed it and then? I washed it and it was taking too long to dry. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I put it for like 10 minutes in the dryer on a delicate cycle, it would be all right. But it felt it a little bit. Okay. Just a little. I can wear it. I, I tried it on. The sleeves are tight, but yeah. that's fine. But it fits. So okay. I can still wear it. Okay. So you're not <laughs> too upset? No. No. I was upset when it happened. I'm like, no. But what? it's a lesson. Yes. Don't do it. Don't rush the process. Don't Just, rush yeah. it. Let the, let the yarn be what it's going to be. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, should we talk about this one next? Yes. So this was my first hand spun sweater. Mm. Oops. Sorry. Dropping stuff. This was my mm. first hand spun sweater. Oh, this color. That I made. Yes. Oh. I love Now this fiber. Green. Yes. This fiber is Paul Work wool that I got at, um, from spin-off magazine used to have this retreat that they would do every year mm -hmm. and I went to it in 2009 and I bought like a whole pound of this green wool so during a tour de fleece I sat there and I spun it all up I love that what what uh pattern is this it's called Adele by the designer's called Pearl Heroin but mm -hmm. I don't think she's like designing anymore like she's not on this yeah mm -hmm. but it's yeah. called Adele yes I love it. It has this, it, would you say it has lace work? Yes, it does have lace work, but because of the felting, <laughs> you can't see it yeah. that much. But it's still there. Yeah. yeah. And then it's all the way in the sleeve too. Yes. Yeah. When you spin, mm -hmm. how do you know what weight you're getting? Exactly. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> there are ways. No, you do. Yeah. You do. Um, the way that, that you can, you, you can set up your wheel to, to, I'm trying to see how I can explain it, but yeah. not be so technical yeah. about it. Well, 
But yeah, some people might understand it technically. You can tr you can try. Okay, so it's about the world size okay. on the wheel. So how fast you spin it is mm -hmm. how um, thin the yarn gets and how fast that you pull the the wool out. Mm -hmm. So when you're pulling it out, it depends on if I pull a lot, I'll get a thick yarn, or if I pull a little bit, I'll get a thinner yarn. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that because when I am caking my wool, if I'm what is this motion spinning. <laughs> It's been a long day. If I'm spinning it faster, the cake is tighter. Yes. Is that similar physics technology? Yeah, kind of. Because you said if you're whirling Yes, faster. yes. If you, you want it to go faster for thinner yarn so that it'll stay together. Okay. Because the twist is what keeps the yarn together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. thicker yarn doesn't need it mm -hmm. as much twist. Mm -hmm. And do you, so you just do the wheel or also I see you brought some drop No, spindles. I do both. I do drop spindles in public because wheels are not that portable. Mm -hmm. yeah, you right? can't take wheels. Yeah, so I hear that. Like drop spindles are much more like, it's like knitting a sock. You mm -hmm. can do it in public. Oh, I love that. I love that analogy. Okay, let's talk about this sweater. Okay, this is going right in the show and tell. Yes, I just love this sweater. This one oh, is one of my favorites. I, I hate one. knitting fingering weight sweaters, but I love wearing them. Yes, it's true. <laughs> But it's I hate knitting them. This one is Spectre by Hobie mm. Locatelli. That's so good. And is this Hedgehog? Yes, it is. Well, the top is Hedgehog, mm -hmm. and the bottom is um, Stitch Together Studio. Oh yes, that that checks it's out. It's a mix. You yeah. see, I love mixing yeah, things. Yeah, Stitch so. Together has nice brights too. Yes. <gasps> and I think it's like four different. It's like two Hedgehogs and two Stitch Together. Yes. So it's kind of like a fade. Yes. Situation. Love that. I love that you did the yellow. On the top. I love how you have that bright at the top. I mean, it's so good to have a, a bright color as the pop on mm -hmm. your face. You yes, know, it just kind of like gives you a little glow. Yeah, like I love when to you're wearing though. it. Yeah. Okay, let, let's do, we have more show and tell. Sure, going more show it. and tell. Yeah. So here's some hand spun oh, yarn okay. that I have. Okay, talk about this one. So that one, um, I knit as I was gonna knit uh, color work gloves out of it. I just haven't done it yet. I don't know what kind of wool it is. I don't know what kind of weight. There are tools where you can measure. You can hold this up, you know, to a tool, and it, you know, based on the thickness, it'll reps tell you per inch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know a lot. I do know reps per inch. <laughs> but the way that um, I knit my hand spun is if you take this and you take like a needle gauge and you fold it and put it through the hole in a needle gauge, mm -hmm. whichever one it fits in, that's the needle that you knit it with. So I don't even go through it. No. Them. Yeah. We're doing that right now. Okay. Sure. So you do it in half? So I would say this is this looks like maybe a worsted weight okay. or maybe a little bigger. So like a, I would use a size eight needle or something. Okay. So let's try this one. Now this one might be. I would think eight is too big. Eight. I can knit an eight, but it's going to be tight. Oh, so I will go up because you see how it fits, but oh. there's still no room on the side. Like I like a little bit of space. Okay. But see how it fits through there? <gasps> yes, I'm going to show that in the video. Sure. That is such a good trick. I've never heard that before. Okay, so here is the A. That is so interesting. And then let's do this one. This one's sock okay, weight. So I would do like a three or four with this okay. one. Here's a four. Oh, see? See if you can stick that okay. through there. I'll hold it. Have to see. I think that's tight again, or is that perfect? No, that's a little tight, but yeah, yeah. I would knit with that for socks. Yes, <gasps> this is such a cool trick. <laughs> Look, so that's in the four. Mm -hmm. so oh knit, like, my four gosh, that. my mind is blown. <laughs> So that's how I knit my hand spun. I spin it and like my default is like this kind of weight when I, so everybody, every spinner has their default mm. that they're comfortable spinning. Yes. So this weight is like my default. So oh this is gonna gosh. be socks eventually. Does this have sparkle in it? It does. This is from a bat from Loop. I don't know if you know her. She's in upstate New York, but yes. she makes she makes the bullseye bats. That's yes. a bullseye bat. <gasps> bullseye bat from Loop. Uh -huh. I remember seeing Loop at the, fir um, the fir for the first time, maybe at a Vogue, and she had that art yarn with like baby trolls in it. Do you remember the trolls? <laughs> yes. Or whatever she puts in it. I was drawn to the trolls. Yeah, these two were made together. I was gonna do like a color work mitten thing going on. With both of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I just haven't worked it out yet. Mm -hmm. Now, do you ever want to do like that process of purchasing the wool right off the sheet that you can get at the festivals and then like 
wash it and card it and all of that. Have you ever done that? Yes, I've done that. I've got to, to the part where you wash it and then you card it and I haven't gotten past that because then you need to dye it. Like if you're buying it. True. I haven't dyed it yet. Because you don't want to do the natural, the wool. You want to have color in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, what are these? These are my spindles. I bought a collection of some of my favorites. Some uh -huh. of my, this is a Turkish spindle. Oh my goodness. I love the way this one spins. It's heavy. So the good thing about this yeah. is that you can take it out and then you have like your little ball <gasps> You, when you're done. You have like a little ball. Oh, we it's can already this. caked? Yeah, it's already caked. Well, I don't know if we saw that well enough. Let's see that again. Oh, sorry. Let me see if I can put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be able to put it back in because I took it out. Yeah. That's it's okay. not gonna go back in. That's, that's fine. That's so cool. So the so we'll show the spindle and then we'll show the end result. Yeah. So once you're done, so this is this is the apparatus, and then the finished product is already caked, ready. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Yeah. And this is a <gasps> it's already ready to knit off of. Yes, a Jenkins black poison wood. Gorgeous. So where did you find this? Rhinebeck. Yeah. Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. Mostly all of these are Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. Um. This is one of my favorites, a zebra wool. Mm. I use this spindle all the time. I forgot the name of the company that mm. makes it, but I love it. That's one of my favorites. Love. This is a Bosworth. <gasps> Bosworths are really good spindles, very balanced. They spin very well. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So what's happening here with the blue and the Blue and orange. Yeah. Oh, that's how the wool was. Okay. I don't know why I was spinning this. Like all of this stuff has been like you see on spindles. It's been sitting there for a while. Yeah. Who knows what I'm gonna do with it? Yeah. I usually take them off, like put them on straws. Mm -hmm. So I probably have more of this that I need to ply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spindles take much longer than yeah. wheels. Yeah. Oh, I would <laughs> And this one. This one is a golding. It's very pretty. Very expensive. This is a treasure. I had to like save up <laughs> for that one at Rhinebeck. I was like, I'm. My mission at um, the last Ryan bike was like, I'm going to get that. Mm. Yes, I love, love that one. That. And this one is a plain one, but it spins really well. Because this is so wide, mm -hmm. it spins for a really long time. Mm. Oh, this is such a physics lesson. Yeah. I was never able to help my children with that subject, so... <laughs> And this one, I want to show you what's special about yes. this one. I don't remember who named, but you can unscrew. Oh, maybe it's on here. What does it say? Ken? Led Bennett. Okay, I guess that's who made it. I love it when you guys sign your stuff, so I don't know <laughs> where I got it from. And so you can screw it on and off. Mm-hmm, so if you need to apply, like I have like three or four of these. It's ready to apply. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you say you have three or four of these, then you're gonna apply it to make it thicker wool. Yes, yes. Oh. So good. <laughs> it's so good. So, of these processes, what what's your favorite part from spinning to then the knitting? Uh, the whole thing. Like it's yeah. no favorite part because yeah. you get to pick everything down from the beginning. Yes. Like. <laughs> yeah. I want it to be like this. I want it to like. Mm -hmm. I just like all of it. Now, some people buy yarn like really impulsively. They don't know what they're gonna do with it. Mm -hmm. Are you the same way with that? Yes. And so, what is a sweater's quantity of a bat for you? Uh, How many ounces? or Like 10 or 12, like a pound. And so a pound is a good sweater quality. So will you do that? Like, oh, I love no, this. So no, I'm out. like a sock knitter, so I buy like four ounces. You'll see four ounces. <laughs> enough to make socks. Four ounces, enough to make socks. Oh, okay. So I buy like little four. That's why I had to mix for the sweater because yeah. I had like so many four ounces and I was like, let me just put them together. But that's a good solution too. Yeah. And then to get something to, that's truly one of a kind, work of art, like no one will have anything like it. Exactly. I, that's a really good tip. For everyone who has just been buying art bats, you can do that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So I'm trying to get better at the way I buy yarn so that I think, okay, I know this yarn can go with like these four different patterns. Mm -hmm. So you're not there yet with your art bet. No. <laughs> Just no. Impulsively. Bad. Not at all. No. That's good though. <laughs> I'm still trying to get through the stash though. I haven't yeah. bought any fiber in a while. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to work through it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, if I can work through, that was what happened with the sweater. I'm mm -hmm. like, I want to buy some stuff at Rhinebeck. I need to spin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so yes, yes, yes. I need to use my stuff so that I can buy more. Totally. Okay. So as one who goes to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, mm -hmm. that's what Rhinebeck is. Oh. What is your favorite part? Like, do you go 
do you just kind of meander around or do you go straight for the spindles or straight for the like what's your experience like okay on? first I, I make a plan mm -hmm. so I watch your video first my oh yeah <laughs> the guy Okay. And then I get my map and I make my plan. Okay, this year I'm going to focus on fiber or mm -hmm. this year I'm going to focus on yarn for this sweater. Like I'll have one thing in mind and then I'll have like money to play around with for whatever I want. But I usually have one thing in mind that I know I want to get that mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you got at the last one, 2019? 2019. That's the last time we had one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, Do you remember what your plan was? It's okay if you don't. No, I think... I didn't really have a plan. The plan was just to get the wine. Like that was like number one. <laughs> Go get the wine, buy the wine, let it sit there, and then you can shop. I think Shamika likes that stuff too. Yeah, Shamika's always like, I've done that a couple of times with her when we meet and I'm like, let's go get our wine yeah. and put it to the side. And then <laughs> now, do you find is there a place you can put it? Or you go put it back in the car or No, they hold it for you. They oh, put your nice. name on it. They put it behind the table if you ask them. Oh that's so good that's the tip. first stop that I usually go. Yeah. That's a good, good tip. Now, do you have a favorite food truck at the New York Festival? Yes, it used to be the artichokes, but I'm vegan now, so they don't do the... Because they have too much butter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I go for the falafel. Mm -hmm. Falafel's my favorite. Speaking of that, is is your family business... Are, do you want to talk about that? Yes, my husband would kill me. <laughs> I, would, I would love to hear about it. So, uh, my husband runs a juice bar in the Bronx. Uh -huh. It's called Juicy. Mm -hmm. And he has, like, he's... Uh, master at making like putting the right fruits and vegetables together and making it taste good mm -hmm. and um so like if you don't really like kale and spinach he's gonna mask that for you so you get your dose he is he yeah. is and he offers juices smoothies and a little bit of food and mm -hmm. the food items are really good he has like he makes these jackfruit tacos have mm -hmm. you ever had jackfruit before yes and it's delicious he makes these jackfruit tacos that are like mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so talk about how you guys got to this vegan lifestyle, because you both are vegan? Yes, we both are vegan. We've been vegan for about eight years now, mm -hmm. I want to say. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I got to think about how old my kids are. I know, and that's how I do too. My husband seven, eight, vegan. yes. Yep. <laughs> my husband's nine years vegan. Vegan-ish. He cheats a lot, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> so, um, what happened was, my husband, we both were a little overweight, and he's like, you know what? I think I'm going to go vegan. And I said, oh, good luck. Have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not because every day I would have like bacon egg and cheese on yeah. a croissant mm -hmm. I'm like I'm not giving that up so mm -hmm. go ahead mm -hmm. have fun yeah yeah <laughs> so he did it and um you know we were preparing the separate meals and he did it and within like three months he lost like 40 pounds wow so I was like you know what I'm gonna try it until I don't want to do it anymore mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, because I didn't want to just say I'm just gonna be this and then that's it I'm never gonna go mm -hmm. back never say mm -hmm. never so I was like, I'll try it till I just don't want to do it anymore. And then I, we've just been, and I, it doesn't make sense to go back now. Yeah. And now this business is also yes. definitely in line with your lifestyle. Yes. yes now talk is. to people who, you know, there are some vegans who are against wool. So talk about that, like, if you wish to, because I yeah. think most of them are not knitters. Yeah, and true, don't really get true. It. Yeah. Well, um, I can't think about, I can't talk about the animal activist side because I went more for because of like health reasons. Yes. Even though I know like there is a lot of suffering going on with um, animals that mm -hmm. are produced mm -hmm. in this country. But I've been to sheep shearings. I've seen them shear the sheep. I've talked to shearers like they're not hurting the animals. Mm -hmm. Like they need the the um, their coats shaped. I can't they get the need word. a haircut. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> they need a haircut and we'll take it. We'll yes. take the hair. Yeah, I, I feel the same them. way. Yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, there was this one news article I saw of this sheep found in the wild that hadn't been shorn in like seven years. And it's like, oh, that poor guy. Mm -hmm. And all of the, the wool that just kept going and going and going. So it is, um, it is nice though. I bet it's nice to try to find these farms that you know are ethically sourcing their yeah. sheep and, yeah, and like they even that so well. Yeah, like even at Rhinebeck, like I'll go out and see Long Island. Um, You're on a farm? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I'll make sure I, you know, purchase something from her because yeah. she's doing a, a good job. Yes, <laughs> and, and just to, and actually the New York Sheep and Wool Festival or any fiber festival is a good opportunity to see, you know, where our animals are and who their shepherdesses are, many, many shepherdesses. Yes. And and that's great. So well done. 
Well done. My husband also went vegan for the same reasons, and so he, you know, has really, you know, had a lifestyle change because mm -hmm. of it. So it's not as hard as you think. Yeah. Um, you just have to yeah. read more labels. Exactly. And the yeah. world seems to be really aware of vegan now. So it is. You know, it restaurants is. Restaurants and things. Yes. So you also like to sew. I do. Now, are you I on do. a sewing kick right now because it's so hot out, or is it kind a of little bit? Well? No, I'm still knitting. Yeah, I'm still knitting. Mm -hmm. I'm like on and off, but yes, I want to sew more stuff. I want to eventually like sew my whole wardrobe, but that takes time. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Do you ever sew to have something be like cohesive with a knit, like to sort of match them? Or yes, mm -hmm. yes, I tried to, but it didn't work out. Uh, last year, I knit a um, was it soldatna, mm -hmm. and then I made. I sewed these yellow uh, like culottes mm -hmm. to match, yeah. but I haven't worn them together yet. Oh, but they will look good? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. That's good. <laughs> and so those who are watching who are crocheters and knitters and want to try sewing, do you have any advice on how to get started on that? Uh, no, just go for it. Um, just buy a machine, like a, a brother, singer, anything that's within your budget. Because mm -hmm. you can get them for like, what'd you say, $100? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can go to, I just bought one of my friends a sewing machine because I want her to be a sewer. Oh, so nice. for Christmas, I'm like, here you go. I love that. <laughs> She's like, thanks. Yeah. No, no she no. knows I'm trying to convert. Oh, good, good, good. I tried to teach her how to knit. She didn't, she didn't like it. So I was like, okay, we'll try sewing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now people will say that machine knitting is like cheating knitting. And, and is there any parallels with drop spindle versus a spinning wheel? Or is it all the same? It's all the same yeah. to me. Yeah. 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 No, I don't think there are any parallels. I think it's the same. Just portable versus not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, going back to the sewing, mm -hmm. I sometimes think if people are making their first sweater, especially if it's in pieces, like a, a seamed sweater, mm -hmm. I feel like it benefits them if they try to sew a shirt first. Okay. And here's why. And tell me, <laughs> just stay with me. Because you know how sometimes a sleeve, like the sleeve, when you cut out the fabric, oh, it has like the cap. almost a horseshoe Yes, shape, the cap. The cap. <laughs> and then this hole is a different yes, shape. shape. Yeah. And so there is this little mind boggle where you're going, wait a second, and then you sort of shape it in and pin it, and then it, oh my gosh, it works out. Well, you do the same thing in sewing. No, with no, that's the, what I'm saying. Yes. This is sewing, sewing. I'm talking about. Yeah. So don't you think oh, that helps with the the construction of a sweater when you knit it? Or I no? I don't think so. I don't know because I knit first before I sew. Oh, you so did. I don't know. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, oh sometimes when I've done these like shapes on a knitted garment, I'm like, I don't, I don't know how it's gonna fit in. But sewing has helped me know how to yes. fit it in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. I know what you mean. Because yeah. a lot of the sweater patterns are like top down or like a yoke and then you just attach the sleeves and it's all easy yep. or raglan but when you have these pieces you're like uh i don't know how those are gonna fit anyway i don't know i just feel <laughs> like if people are doing more complicated knits it helps them to sew yeah i would think a so little too. bit um okay so what else what else what are you working on right now Do you well wait let me talk about my tea oh what, what are you want? wearing <laughs> I'm like not wearing it, so I didn't even. Yeah, what are you this is wearing? the Rift Tea by Jacqueline. Yes, I love the Rift. Yes, I love it. I love it. I don't know what the yarn is. It was like in a yarn swap, and somebody didn't want it, and I was like, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. It. It's a little itchy, but I don't mind. Yeah. I love the fit. Yeah. And you're wearing it on a hundred degree day. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's, it's the jeans bad. on a hundred degree. <laughs> yeah, it's the jeans. But it's not the shirt. The shirt yeah. is. Oh, I love it's really that. good. Yes, yeah. I love it. And what one. are you working on right now? Right now, I'm actually making a baby blanket mm -hmm. for a shower, baby shower that's supposed to be tomorrow, but I don't think they're getting it. I'm not done yet. Oh, so they're going <laughs> to cancel the shower because your blankets? Yeah. Oh, they're not getting it. They're yeah. not getting the blanket yet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like, you need to postpone the shower because the gift isn't done yet. No, I'll just show up and I'll show it to them and say, here, here's the blanket, but it's not finished yet. You'll get it next week. Yeah, well, the baby's not here yet. So you no, no. Yeah, perfect. I'm a little bit of time. Now, are you a monogamous knitter? Yes, I am. Oh. Good. I'm focused. For like, I need you. to be focused on one project at a time. That's it. Get it done and then on to the next one. Because right after this, I have to knit my Rhinebeck sweater. Yeah. Do you know what that is yet? Yes. Are you going to share here? I don't think I can. It's okay. a secret. It's me and my crew. We're all wearing the same sweater. It's going to be like 
four or five of us in the same sweater in different colors. Tell us about your crew. My crew, um, it's a knitting group that meets at um, Beetle and Fred, which is kind of like my local yarn shop. Have you heard of them mm -hmm. before? Beetle and Fred? Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Beetle and Fred, it's a small shop in Beacon, New York. Uh huh. You can actually just take like Metro North up. It's a beautiful ride. And then there's a bus that goes up Main Street. Okay. But it's a shop. Um, they have fabric. So mm -hmm. it's like sewing, quilting, knitting. The front of the shop is yarn and the back of the shop is like fabric and sewing and patterns. And it's just a wonderland. And <laughs> I cannot believe I never heard of it. I'm so excited. Yes. Love and it. the owner, Katie, she's wonderful. She used to have this um, Thursday night knit group. She would stay open till like nine o'clock on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And we would just sit there and knit. And it was just wonderful group of ladies and so you're all knitting the same pattern yes different colors yes we've done that before not 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 around back 2019 2018 okay we did it <gasps> i love it i love i live for when i see people at ryan and they're all like the crew like yes I, <gasps> I love that now are you planning out your colors based on what suits you or is it like we want to do this color palette no, what suits me? Like everybody okay. picked out their own colors. I already have my colors. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, like a turquoise, like a jewel tone blue. You see, I like the jewel tone. So like it's going to be like a turquoise blue with accents of yellow mm -hmm. and orange. So good. Now, how do you come to decide on what you're going to knit? I mean, is there any fighting? There was. It took us like a whole month to figure it out. Yeah. Like we were like in the group chat like, what about this pattern? Oh, I don't like that. What about this pattern? Okay, let's vote. Everybody vote. We had to vote. I lost the vote. I don't really want to wear this sweater, but really? yeah. But you're doing it for the group. I am. At least you get to pick out the yarn. Yes. I mean, I guess worst case scenario, you could frog it when it's all over. And make it no, great. I'll wear it. It's not that bad. It's not. It's not that bad. Okay, so it, what are the factors that affect it the most? Is it the weight of yarn? Is it the design? Do you know what I mean? Like who's Who's most picky about what? Like, what's most important to you? I don't, I just... Or is it just like you see it and you have to have a feeling about it? Yeah, yeah. like I was looking at the ones on Ravelry people have made already mm -hmm. and I, I just wasn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. It's an oversized sweater, I'll say this much, it's an oversized sweater. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. oversized mm -hmm. and I wasn't really... Oversized cardigan. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I was thinking, I could see people saying, I'm not knitting a fingering weight sweater. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or I, I think that might have happened. I think that might have happened a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the nice thing about the, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival is that it is sometimes cool, except for that one, that one year that we'll never forget. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it, was like, it was, and I still wore my sweater. I was like, oh, I don't yeah. care. I was oh, sweating. Yeah. We did it. We're like, we got the boob sweat. We're yeah. still wearing it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I do think Unworsted weight is not too risky. Yeah, this one is worsted weight. Yeah. It's kind of may maybe a little Aaron bulky, but mm -hmm. it's worsted weight, mm -hmm. so it'll go quick. Mm -hmm. I'll be done. I also like it when people pick something out at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival one year to knit for like the next year or something like that, or like yes. fiber. Yeah, I love that too. Well, anything else you want to share before we say goodbye? Um, no, I think that's it. Well, thank you so much for being here. Your Instagram is. Harlem Pearls, because yes. you grew up there. Yes. And was there a, a big knitting culture in no. Harlem? No. No. It's just when I started out with knitting and everything, and I had to pick a name, you know, everything was like, you know, Brooklyn Knits or, you know, whatever this. And I was like, okay, I'll just choose Harlem Pearls, mm -hmm. and I just haven't changed it. Yeah, I love that. I love, I love when people just have that little, you know, nod to home, mm -hmm. you know, what feels like home to them. Yeah. And you mentioned you had kids. One yes. or more than one? Three kids. Three boys. Oh, wow. I have. <laughs> wow. Boy mom. Yes. I can see why you have all of these things. This is, yes. This is good. Yes. Same with girl mom, to be honest. Like, I need it too. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the girls are so emotional. Oh, yeah. No, boys can be. There's so um, much talking. Oh, talking. Yeah. So much listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, are they interested at all in the fiber? No, no. I have um, a 19 year old. Mm, same. I tried to uh, teach him to knit. He knew how to knit a little bit. I don't think now he knows how to knit. Yeah. And then I have uh, seven-year-old twins. <gasps> yeah, I know. Wow. What was I thinking? Wow. Well, I don't think <laughs> you usually choose twins. I think twins just happen. Twins. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I yeah. love that. Well, my 19-year-old, she's going back to school, and she has a guy friend who wants to start a knitting club with her. So they're going to do a knitting club. Nice. Um, so maybe, maybe your <laughs> son will come across something like that and be like, hey, I recognize that. You never know. 
You never know. I yeah. taught my nephew to knit. He's the only one who was interested in it. So. Nice. There you go. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And I oh, hope thank I you see for you. having me. I hope I see you at New York Sheep and Wall. Yes, you will. be on the video again. I want the whole crew. Yeah, of course. I want the whole I'll crew. I'll tell them. <laughs> They'll and be so happy. Until then, we'll say bye.